Hello everybody, today me and Beave, a friend of mine, have ranked the builds of the Island Diorama competition. In this video, I will be reviewing the top three builds and also revealing the number one and automatically also the winner. The builds have been ranked based on three main categories. So the first category being the actual build and how well it is built and how much detail there is. Second category being the story and how well that's written. And the third category, how good the build connects with the story. Knowing now how me and Beeve will be judging these builds, I will also be explaining whilst reviewing the, the builds how they rank on each category and then also I'll be giving them an overall score based on both of our opinions. On third place is the Nature's Solitaire by Khan. This island has some key features that really places this above its contestants. Firstly, the obvious eye catcher are these huge roots, and if you look around the island, you notice. And if you look around the island, you notice that also the trees are custom built. This island is the only island with custom built trees, and they do look amazing. Now keep in mind it was really difficult to set these top three builds apart from the other builds since they're all so good. But what this build does extremely well is the plants and environment that are naturally interlocked with the man-made structures. The rockwork is very impressive, especially along the coastline. Using the twilight selectite pieces really makes these rocks look like coastal rocks that have been covered with sand. When inspecting the man-made structures, you notice that there are so many little details, from cooking pots to stacked wood. There are so many little things to look at. Also, the penguins are well suited with the island and fit perfectly with the story. When we move over to the story, I think that it was a very uplifting story with a beautiful ending. I personally prefer the stories with a good ending, which you will see is a reoccurring thing in this top three list. The build perfectly reflects the story of a survivor deserted on this island. The details of the story can be found in the build, which is very important in my opinion. Where this build may lack a little bit is that some things may look slightly bit repetitive. This is the cost of having custom trees because of how time consuming the building of custom trees is. This is forgivable however since the huge baobab tree does look stunning, especially at night. Another minor thing I want to mention is that there is a clear front side of the build. When looking at this build from the back, it is definitely not as eye-catching. Which is fine, since good cinematography is always viewed from a preferable angle, but will eventually be one of the reasons why this build will end up on third place. Still, a third place is something to be really proud of. The overall score given to this island, based on these three categories and the combination of our scores put together, places this island on a solid 7.8 out of 10. On second place we have the Isle of Sito by Archer. Now this build looks hyper realistic, the build is trying to be as realistic as possible staying far away from fantasy. The environment looks so unique and screams Mediterranean. It's like Archer created its own biome for this island despite it being a temperate map. If you look around the map we can see how there is a sheer detail in the rock. This is by far the best rock work of any of the builds. This is what places the build above a lot of the other builds, except for number one of course. When you take a closer look we see how there are many small details that you would initially look over. Two boats and the tents fit very well with the story about the fishermen setting up a camp here. When looking even closer you notice that to the left there is even an invisible butterfly house that is so easily looked over. It is hard to tell there even is a butterfly house here. All the enrichment items have been hidden away with plants and the house blends perfectly with the environment. The extra detail of the water hitting the coastline and even going around the boat is simply a genius. On top of the mountain there is an ancient Greek temple which is one of the better Greek temples I've seen. With rubble even going down the mountain and even falling off the cliff. The badges are so unique and are definitely the most original way of representing the animal species. Using a color morph and pretending it is its own subspecies of badger is so original and it definitely deserves some bonus points. With an amazing build also comes an amazing story. It is a very believable and realistic story with fishermen discovering and exploring this island, finding these new subspecies of badgers and the temple on top of the mountain. This is a very pleasant story to read, however when connecting it to the build the story doesn't have a very strong connection. 
Yes, all the details in the story do return in the build, but by removing the story, the build doesn't become any less understandable. It feels more like the story has been written around what has already been built, instead of the story and the build relying on each other. However, the resemblance is still definitely strong, and we cannot deny that the story around the Badger is one of the best. The key points that do not make this build number one, except for the sometimes weaker link of this build and story, is the very odd mystical cave. The story does explain that the Badgers have found this cave and use it as a home. I feel like the island could have gone without the cave though. As I mentioned earlier, the island is really hyper-realistic, which is what makes this build so great. But once taking a look at the cave, it feels a bit too much like a fairy tale and it takes away from the hyper-realism. However, it's still a strong build and a well-deserved second place. With the overall score of this island, putting the different categories together, this island receives a 7.9 out of 10, which just only defeats the previous contestant with 0.1. The winner of this competition is Hollow with its Crescent Island. This build is quite a dark one, literally, since the island looks best at night. With burnt trees everywhere, it is quite a sad view, but the way Hollow has made the trees look like they are scotched and on fire is simply so well done. Using red lights hidden under the ground, the trees glow in a way it looks like they are on fire. Using smoke effects everywhere, even where the trees aren't red anymore, it looks like the surface is really hot. Then if you move over to the big red line of fire, it looks like the fire is still spreading. This island diorama has been built mid-action, where the forest is still lighting on fire. There are also some dead otters to be found around the island, some with blood indicating they jumped off of the cliff. Which is so sad, yet so well done. With boats around the island with dead otters and crates, you can really connect the dots and know what happened here. It's a tragic story, but a very good one. There are even otters stuck in the fishing nets, and when we take a look into the cave, we can see the last remaining otter pups. Now, this cave is very naturalistic and ties in perfectly with the story. When looking at the island and examining the details, you don't even need to read the story to know what happened. The whole island tells one big story. It is like you can see it all happening in front of you. If you take a look at the story, it was a very tragic tale, but with a somewhat good ending. The remaining otters find a bit of forest to live in the cave. The story also highlights the tragic effects of human activity. The saddest part is that this isn't far from reality. However, the best part is how the build perfectly tells the story. Both the build and the story rely on each other. There is no build without that story, and there is no story without the visual representation of the build. The only minor downside is despite the whole cave narrative fitting with the story, I feel like having the whole water population stuck in this cave is really limiting. The cave itself isn't as mind-blowing as the overworld, but all I can say is, the negatives don't overweigh the positives, and Holo is a proud winner of this competition. Congratulations to Holo for winning this competition, and with the scores of the categories all put together, this build comes with a solid score of 8.5 out of 10, so a clear winner. They will receive a free copy of any Planet Zoo TLC of their choice. Thank you for following and participating in this competition, everybody. It was really fun to look at all of your builds. It was extremely difficult to come up with a winner. We may definitely do something like this again though in the future, but for now, thank you all for tuning in.